Hello there guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Sal speaking. Today we're gonna talk about gambling and addiction recovery. This is a really hard topic to address and I hope I'll meet your expectations. Well, first of all, guys, consider time. What do you do with your time? Do you keep yourself busy or do you go out doing some stupid things? Because time is very important. I can't generalize, but most poor people, you know, they just, you know, complain about themselves and they don't do anything to improve themselves. Um, I believe that, you know, there's no, there's nothing uh, like destiny. We're not destined to something. We can flip things around if we believe in ourselves. Why do people gamble? People gamble because they like taking risks because they like taking risk. Well, let's talk about this. Basically, like people are standing on the top of a cliff, specifically on the edge of a cliff. Let's pretend you don't know anything about free climbing and all of a sudden one day you decide to go to the closest place, to the closest mountain, and you just start climbing up that mountain without any ropes, without being secured to any ropes. How would you feel if you would like look down? How would you feel? Would you feel safe then? Well, this is where like you know many people who have gambling problems do. They're climbing up. They're climbing up a rock. They're climbing up. Uh, they're free climbing actually, and they're not secured to any ropes. Or maybe they are secured to a rope, but this is like a fake rope. What happens is. When you win, the rope suddenly uh, takes you up and uh, you, you are one step, you are so close to climb up to reach the very top of, of that mountain that you are so close but then something happens. You start playing again and you go down the hill. You go all the way down and you turn around yourself and you're like, man, I need to climb up from the very beginning, you know you find yourself at the very bottom this is something that happens to each and every one of us sometimes in life we find ourselves on the very bottom we have to start from zero again we have to start from the very beginning you know so what is the uh, stumbling block uh, when it comes to gambling the problem with gambling is winning if you win you have a problem. Why? Because winning makes you makes you feel so good, makes you feel that you can solve your problems. That um, you know, you think, well, if I, for example, let's let's pretend that you bet uh, ten dollars on something, you know, and you win two hundred dollars. So you're like, whoa, I won twenty times. Uh, ten dollars so I can you know I can earn more so if I invest or if I bet you know two hundred dollars on a horse or a you know a car whatever you play with you know you you think okay I can make more money and some people really like think that they can make more money out of you know they, that they can start with a budget for example say fifty dollars and then from fifty dollars they believe that they can build up to I don't know millions of dollars and they, they can also solve their problems all of this is fake it's not going to happen I promise you so what's the thing that you need to consider what is the thing that you need to understand about this problem you need to understand that the money you win are the money you already spent betting on several things so it's a losing game gambling is a losing game you know when you gamble you lose and think about for a second the guys who own casinos don't you think they know that you're gonna you know spend all of your money gambling don't you think they are aware of the fact that you're gonna spend all of it but they are the guys they're those who win they're the guys who win because they become rich because in the world there are people like you who play who gamble and who want to feel that risk you know so what happens when you uh, when you win actually what happens before you win the sense of anticipation creates a natural high and adrenaline rush a 
film will relate to fun and entertainment. We feel somewhat entertained. We are excited. We, we know, we are excited because of the unknown. You know, this happens to travelers who were exploring the world. They don't know what's next. And this is in the nature of every man, like to explore and to see things. But when you explore and see things, you're not actually, you know, like you're not losing money and you're, and you're not losing your family either. But when it comes to gambling, you lose lots of things. Escapism. So the gambling environment can produce an escape from everyday life. You know, you feel that when you go to that place, you forget the world. You leave the old world behind you, your problems and all this stuff is not there any longer. You feel free, you feel busy, or you feel strong. A guy, you know, a guy just told me that He's never cheated on his wife. And I was like, congratulations, that's a great thing, you know. I wouldn't cheat on my wife, although I'm not married. He said that gambling helped him out not to cheat on his wife. And how sad is that, you know? What about love, you know? Love should be like the cure for all these things. You know, if you love somebody, you don't need to go gambling to, uh, to avoid cheating on them, you know? And that, how sad is that? People don't realize it. People are not aware of this. I want people to be aware about this problem. I want them to know why people gamble. Glamorous. Uh, okay, in film and TV, we see uh, characters like, uh, we see the actors enjoying like a nice evening, a nice night at the casino, you know? And I can imagine like the scene in my mind of a famous actor drinking whiskey, smoking a cigarette, and maybe having wearing a tuxedo and uh, you know being very elegant and uh, you know they 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 um, they look very important but they're nothing more than miserable in that very moment. But nevertheless, he feels cool. You know, he feels great. He feels that he has power because he has money. Why do people gamble? Because gambling can be also social. There's a big social part in gambling, you know, when you gamble, you go to a place, you know, sometimes you, you can also gamble by staying at home on the internet, that's even, you know, more sad than uh, going to an actual place, to an actual agency. So people go there, for example, here in Italy, they go there and they, you know, meet, you know, with each other, they salute each other, everybody knows everybody by name. and. It's like you feel like you're on a street market or something. There's something wrong with these guys, you know. And and you know they, they you know they they feel like they're friends, but they're not friends. They're gambling friends. And gambling friends, it means that if I win, I'm happy, and maybe I'll give you like 20 bucks so that you can continue playing. But if I start losing, I get mad, man. If I start losing. It's a problem, and we're not friends anymore. And uh, also, if you you know if you borrow money from somebody, or if you're lending money to somebody, and the guy doesn't give it back to you, you get mad, and you, you can even start fighting with that guy. Some people, because of gambling, they are they will be willing to do anything. They will be willing to steal if necessary in order to have money to spend on these stupid bets. So we all know how like gambling goes. We all know like the nature of the game. We do know that the odds always, and I say always, favor the house. The thought of hitting a, a casino jackpot, they're often too alluring despite probability. People don't give a crap about probability. They don't like math. They don't have, they don't understand math. Many of these guys who play, they don't even have an understanding of what they are doing. It's easy, like there's this big pot where people like throw their money, you know. And when you win, you win what you, the money you've spent. But you know, keep in mind that when you gamble and you win, you win just a small part of the money you have invested, as you would think. But that's wrong. That's wrong. Think about that when you win something that you haven't worked for, something that you didn't, you know, 
sacrifice for. It's an easy thing, you know, and and, and also like people win so easily, you know, they tend to spend the money that they have won in, in an easy way too, you know. So what I think about gambling, what I think about like playing these games, I think that, well, if you're addicted, it's a problem. If you're not addicted, you could become addicted. And that's a problem too. If you want to try playing, you know, gambling or something, I don't know, I don't suggest you to do it, but if you want to do it, just do it. If you win, just stop. And if you stop after winning, you have won for the rest of your life. But if you, if you continue on playing, you have lost everything and you will lose even more things. You will lose everything. So what is the common thought? The common thought is that people say, well, you know, a big payout could solve all my problems, you know, and, and if I win this money, I'll be able to pay off my debts, I'll be happy again, and I'll have my life back, and if, if I have money, I am happy, if I don't have money, I am sad, you know, I am, I am confused. So what are some of the consequences, you know? People saying, for example, oh, my partner uh, is threatening to leave me, and you know, and well, would you blame that partner for doing that? Why don't you understand the importance of having a partner, the importance of having somebody next to you, somebody who cares about you, somebody who understands, somebody who suffers with you and for you sometimes as well. Some people say I'm losing my job, others say I am losing my family, I'm losing my children, you know, it is proof that children, you know, the minors for example, who feel neglected by their parents, they become depressed and they also develop great feelings of anger, you know, they, they're angry, they, you know, come on, let's be honest, today, like, children, they watch TV all the time, they watch cartoons, and some cartoons are somewhat violent, and they're, like, you know, almost inclined to be violent, because they watch this stuff all the time, and if you keep on neglecting your children, because you have to go out playing, you know, the roulette, or going to a casino, or whatever you do, if you're going gambling instead of spending time with your family, you know, this is what you're doing to your children. So what are the alternatives? It's easy, like, try to spend time with your family, quality time, you know, do fun things, not necessarily expensive things. If you can afford it, go out for a nice dinner, you know. Think about the money you've spent gambling, you know, and think about the money you've lost. Think about the money you spend and you probably won't see again. I love going out for dinner. I love food. And food here in Sicily, where I live, is quite inexpensive. You can go out, enjoy a nice dinner. And I'm not a drinker myself, but I, I love food. Food makes you feel good, you know. And, and Sicilian food is very good, very tasty. And it, it really can make you forget some of the problems of life. So when you play, what happens? You are in debt, you are in debt. So let's talk about something that people don't think about it because you know, this, you know, the gambling problem can be very emotionally, um, can have a really strong emotional influence into your life. But we're not just talking about psychology here, we're also talking about health. So who suffers from gambling? If you're gambling, I'm sure you're like going through a hard time. There are many things you're trying to figure out in life and it's not easy for you. I do understand that. But please keep in mind that your family is physically suffering as well. But what are some of the symptoms people can go through because of gambling? Well, anxiety, depression, anxiety for example. You know, you're always anxious, you know, you, you kind of you know, you have a short breath, you know, and you have breathing problems. You can't sleep at night. You have, you are depressed. You have depression, it's a big problem. Everybody suffers from depression. So if you're playing, you're even more depressed than ever, you know. Life is hard already. So 
Take care of yourselves, guys. Bowel problems, even headaches. Headaches come be also because of gambling. How crazy is that? And muscle problems, you know. So I don't understand why, you know, you need to spend your money playing these games. Why do you need to spend your money gambling and feeling unhealthy at the same time? It doesn't make any sense. I think that the Dalai Lama said something along these lines. I don't remember the quote perfectly, but he said something along these lines. He said that the Western people, they spend their, you know, they use the spend their health to make money and they spend the money they made to regain their health. So there's a problem here, you know. Um, I understand this quote is quite good. It, it is a good advice. And you're playing, you know, you're like spending money, you're like feeling unhealthy. You don't feel good with yourself from a psychological point of view, from a spiritual point of view, if you, if you wish. And especially from a health point of view. Well, some people even lose interest in having sex. And that could be a really big problem. In, in especially in a family in in a family environment you know between husband and wife you know that could be a big problem so you feel angry you know i i've seen people i've i've known people who have played for a long long time and their attitude is very angry they get angry nervous for no reason and they're not enjoying life believe me i have i know a guy who's like 55 years old and he looks like 40s. Why does he look, why does he look 40? Because he, he doesn't care about things. Some people end up with suicide and that's really, really sad. The LDS Church has issued a, a 12 steps um, addiction recovery program. First step talks about honesty. You, you need to admit the problem. You can't overcome it alone. You need some help. You need a friend to talk with. You might need a doctor, a psychologist, a psychiatric, whatever you need, just seek for help. You also need to have hope. In my case, I am a Christian and I, and I do have hope. I believe in Jesus Christ, but that's, in, that's me. You might be a Muslim, you might be a believer in something else. So if you, ever, if you are a believer, you know, you just hold on into the things you believe. Even though you're not a believer, just believe in yourself. Also, you need to trust God if you are a believer or you need to trust yourself, you need to trust a friend, you need to trust a mentor, somebody who knows more than you do, somebody who has more experience than you do actually. Step 4 invites you to make a um, kind of a moral inventory of the things you've done, to write down the things you've done, that will make you more aware and in a way also more, it will make you feel more guilty, I know and probably responsible for the things you've done. Step four talks about truth. Never lose your hope. Believe in yourself. Believe that you can overcome. Believe that you can totally be healed from this problem. Confession, you know, talk with a friend. Talk with a bishop. Talk to one of your religious leaders about your problems. Seek for help. Be willing to have a change of heart. Be willing to change. Humility. Ask God for help or ask um, for help anyways to a professional such as a doctor, a psychologist and so forth. So seek for forgiveness as well. You must have, I, I'm sure you must have harmed many people with your acts. Step 9 talks about making a restitution. Step 10 makes you more aware of your daily accountability you know we are accountable for all the things we do and if there will be some shortcomings on the way don't worry it's part of the plan step 11 talks about meditation meditate pray meditate go to a natural place just relax think about life go to the seashore enjoy the breeze enjoy the smell enjoy the sense of life and the last step, 12th step is service, helping people. When you help people, you lift people up, you feel better, you feel stronger, you feel happier. You feel like your life has a great sense and you have a purpose on this planet. Don't give up. I am with you. I understand how you feel, you know, and um, 
You know, we all go through problems. We all have addictions. We all, we all are addicted in some things, more or less. But we can overcome these things if we believe in ourselves, if we keep on fighting. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, if you feel sad, you better call Sal. Goodbye.